Um, so I wrote the book um, after. Well, actually, let me let me start over. The book is about the Obama administration's Iran policy. Three years now after he so famously extended his hand of friendship in hope that the Iranians would unclench the fist, we are now actually closer to a military confrontation than we have been in a very long time. And the book is going through this history and seeing what is it that actually happened, what went wrong, what went right, what were the mistakes that were committed from all sides. Because I interview not only the American officials, but also the Israelis, the Saudis, the Europeans, the Brazilians, the Turks, and of course also the Iranian negotiators, in order to try to get a complete 360 degree picture of what actually happened with Obama's diplomacy. This was a historical um, uh, event, the fact that Obama came into office and that he wanted to pursue diplomacy uh, with uh, uh, not only Iran, but many of his uh, America's foes. I mean, remember, this comes right after the eight years of the Bush administration in which diplomacy was viewed as a sign of weakness. So this was not just about Iran, this was about the U.S. rediscovering the diplomatic tool as its primary uh, tool of statescraft. So I thought it was quite interesting and important because it would have the effect of uh, potentially bringing back the U.S. into a more normal state in which it would use diplomacy uh, more normally, more casually than it would under the Bush administration in which it was essentially shunning diplomacy. So in that sense, it would have significant repercussions not only on the U.S.-Iran situation but also on many other um, uh, problems that the U.S. is facing. I think at the end of the day, the Obama administration was quite genuine about diplomacy. I think the president had a very genuine vision and very genuine intent. But from the very minute he stepped into the White House, that intent, that vision was consistently compromised by many different factors, ranging from pressure from Israel, pressure from Saudi Arabia, also some pressure from the Europeans, to the behavior and the actions of the Iranian government, to unpredictable events such as the Iranian election fraud and the massive human rights abuses that took place after that. All of these factors chipped away from the president's political space to pursue the vision that he originally had intended to pursue. By the time he manages to get everyone to the table, it's already October in 2009. Ten months of the president's one-year period for diplomacy had already passed without any diplomacy. And at that moment, the diplomacy had become, in the words of one of Obama's own officials, a gamble on a single roll of the dice, meaning that it had to work right away or not at all. And diplomacy almost never works in that type of an instantaneous fashion. And that's where we are today, after that failure, because of the Iranians not being able to come to a yes, uh, we essentially abandoned diplomacy and we have entered into the sanctions track. And the sanctions tract has brought us now to the brink of war. The sanctions have been tremendously painful for the Iranian economy. Uh, they've been very effective in that sense, um, that it have actually brought a tremendous amount of pain onto Iran. But the question is, who's feeling the pain? And most of that pain, the vast majority of that pain, is felt by the ordinary population. The population that I think is clear to most of the world is not in favor of the Iranian government and that has tried on its own ways to change the system. Um, the question then is, will this pain translate into a change of policy on the Iranian side? And so far we haven't seen much of an indication of that. Uh, in fact, in my assessment, there's a greater likelihood that the Iranian will escalate rather than they will capitulate. And that means that we will continue to see further escalation and the question is how far can this escalate without actually leading to an actual war. Well, I think the key thing here is the Obama administration doesn't want to have a war. I don't think the Iranians, at least the majority within the leadership, is looking for a war. The question is do they have the political strength and the political will to start a diplomatic process, meaning not just another meeting. There's been too many of these one-off meetings in which the two sides have exchanged ultimatums. What is needed is real diplomacy, and real diplomacy is a process. It's not one meeting. If they can do that, then there is some hope uh, that this issue can get resolved. 
Um, the question is, do they have the strength to come to the table and stay at the table for a period can range up to two or three years? It's absolutely critical because this is not going to get resolved in a short time frame. Um, and it's difficult to be too hopeful about that for several different reasons. One being that Obama is right now facing an election. And I don't know to what extent he does have the political flexibility to stay at the table uh, during such an election. Moreover, the Iranians have had a long history of having their own political problems that has made it very difficult for them uh, to remain at the table because the factions are fighting over this issue and undermining whoever is daring to take a risk for peace. I think the U.S. elections make it a bit more difficult for Obama to um, make a deal. I think what he's looking for, however, is by having a diplomatic process in place, it reduces the likelihood of the Israelis taking military action. As long as there's some ongoing process, he doesn't have to worry about that scenario as much. Mm -hmm. But is he capable of committing himself to the necessary compromises in an election year? Are the Iranians? That's the big problem. You have a situation in which the stakes are higher than ever before. Yet the flexibility on side because of their political cycles is at its minimum. I think the administration's tactic is to just start a process, make sure everyone stays at the table, run out the clock on 2013, uh, until 2013, and then not really start the real dealing and the real compromises until after the elections. I, I think the administration, again, uh, when you talk to them, they're, they're quite clear that this is a very dangerous situation. They have themselves deliberately try to create the situation. They believe that there needs to be a moment of tr truth between you and Iran. There needs to be a credible military threat. There needs to be massive sanctions in their assessment in order to force Iran to make the decisions that they otherwise, in this assessment, would have evaded. I understand the perspective. I disagree with it somewhat, and I also am very concerned about the risks, because the Iranians may completely misread the situation. Instead of seeing the U.S., pushing it to a climax to get maximum negotiating leverage. The Iranians may think that the U.S. is actually preparing for a war and as a result may take action of their own. Uh, moreover, the Israelis can do something in this situation that could really spark a large conflict. And I think that's part of the reason why the administration has de-escalated the situation quite a lot in the last six weeks. So it's a very risky approach that they have taken. Well, I think the real um, critical component here to remember is that Diplomacy, diplomacy has not been exhausted, not in the slightest. Um, we've had one-off exchanges of ultimatums. That's not real diplomacy. And in fact, when there was some real diplomacy, when the Turks and the Brazilians managed to get Iran to sign the agreement um, and get a deal, unfortunately by that time the political cycle in Washington D.C. didn't enable Obama to say yes to a deal that he had said yes to three weeks earlier when, we had written, when he had written Ob uh, the Turks and the Brazilian and ask them to do exactly what they did. Um, diplomacy doesn't work because the deal is perfect, nor does it work because the other side plays it fair, uh, nor does it work because the other side doesn't play for time. All of those things do happen in a diplomatic process. The reason why diplomacy works is not because of the perfection of the deal, but because of the political will to overcome the imperfections of the deal because of a realization that at the end of the day, however imperfect the deal is, the deal is still better than the status quo or where p things will be if there isn't an agreement. And in the case of the US and Iran, things that will be most likely will be a war. And as a result, the two sides should muster the political will to overcome these imperfections. That is not the approach to diplomacy, unfortunately, that either Iran or the US has taken in the last couple of years. Now, whether it will change in the future remains to be seen, but I think it should be quite clear. If we have just a couple of more of these one-off meetings, not a real process, no real negotiations, but rather here's our proposal, accept it or else, uh, that's not going to lead to any solution.